This deer is about 200 yards. We've got to get him 50 yards closer. going in on the river, uh, edge of the Tallahatchie River, and going to hunt on the cornfield. Got a flap full of mallards. A lot of wood ducks and mallards and pintails. They're going to come right over the trees, right, right in front of them, and you're going to shoot them in the face. <laughs> Might have to shoot them in the rear if they don't come in where we can shoot them in the face. <laughs> We're going to try to shoot all green heads. But, you know, we don't like to shoot hens and stuff. We like for them to, you know, make more, more, make more ducks so more people have ducks to hunt. The duck day this morning, boys. You know, we've had days we've been fighting mosquitoes. It's 20 degrees, it's a 20 mile an hour northwest wind. If you don't like this, you just did something wrong. That's with right. <laughs> the duck's going to duck heaven this morning. <laughs> don't you shoot the hen. Morning. A lot of wood ducks and mallards and pintails. I'm duck hunting. No mosquitoes. I got on so many clothes, I don't even know if I can lift my gun. Official <laughs> duck guy in the state of Mississippi. The oldest right duck here. call in the, in the state of Mississippi. <laughs> Oh, what a beautiful morning. Here we go. Ducks in the sky. Four on the left. How about that? That's good, Willis. You got it. Hey, folks, we're here in Tallahatchie County. We're at Tallahatchie Hunts. We've got Catfish Mike Flown. Mike. Thank you so much for having us down here, having Mississippi Outdoors down here to deer hunt and duck hunt. I tell you what, Randy, we've had two good days of hunting. We didn't get a big deer yesterday, but we came about as close as we could come without getting one. And then this morning, we really had a good hunt on the mallards. We had, had you guys separated around and had some cold weather moving in the last couple of days. And now we're hitting those cornfields pretty good. And really got some good footage this morning. We saw a lot of ducks, catfish. Catfish, tell us about Tallahatchie hunts and, and tell us what you offer here and how people can actually get in touch with you and come do what we did for the last two days. This is my, actually my 12th year in business. I started it with my wife 12 years ago and uh, we came, I had, I've always taken people duck hunting. I've always, uh, you know, I've lived here, I'm from here. I've duck hunted all my life and uh, once we started it, uh, everybody said, well, you need to build a big lodge. You need to build these fancy blinds and stuff. I thought about it for a minute. I said, well, heck, I'm gonna do it like I do. Everybody I ever hunted would like to steal ducks. I said, we'll do it my way. So I don't have any fancy lodges. I just got some houses that I, my system all keeps up for me. And uh, I've got my house here. We come back here for breakfast after the hunt. And we've got all the land I farm here. Uh, and uh, we don't hunt out of blinds. Y'all like my blinds this morning? And Catfish, that's right. You're not putting on a show for anybody. People come down here and they want to experience a duck hunt, a deer hunt. They want to enjoy the outdoors. They don't want anything fancy. They want to do it just like Catfish has done it and be successful. We had a guy here from North Carolina the other day that uh, I took him in and there were no woods anywhere. Just kind of like where y'all hunted yesterday for the deer. And I, I had a, a, a $8 chair I bought from Dollar General. It was blue. And some, and some head snippers, and I made him a little turkey blind in there, and he killed a 20 inch 12 point, scored about 150. And he says, I said, how do you like your deer stand? He said, man, I love it. And the same way with the duck hunting, you know, y'all were just standing out there facing the sun this morning with one goose, and you're back to the sun with another with the wind in your face, and uh, it's just no blinds, you know. Just right out there in the woods with, with, the, with the animals. It That's was right. great. That's right. But you know, the secret to killing ducks, and it always has been, you got to hunt where the ducks are. Damn, that's a shovel. That's a Hollywood Maller. Tag team there, Bobber. My eyes are taking me two shots. Well, because you missed on the first one. <laughs> Come here. No band. Green hair, man. It's coming back around, guys. Coming back. 
Baby. Thank you. Ooh. It's pretty. We just, where I, you know, where I live, we don't have the have pintails. <laughs> two coming, two coming to the right. Dead. Up high, 12 o'clock. Yes, on your left, on your left. Here they come, guys. Another green head. Here they come. I might hit one every now and then, and I just can't ever hit something right on top of me like that. <laughs> yeah, that one was out of range after I shot that first one, man. <laughs> we had a great hunt, and uh, it's nice because it's been a tough year so far. And then, uh, but we picked our location. We knew we, have, we were going to have five guns and then a cameraman. So we hunted on the bank of the Tallahatchie River with uh, some backwater uh, flooded out cornfield. And so it was uh, very you know, easily to film with a dog and the shooting and then he could be set up and we were we had the sun at our back so it really helped out with the mallards coming in and uh, and they you know they couldn't see us once they got out in front and uh, the first nine ducks we killed were greenheads which is r rare especially this year and uh, and it was awesome this afternoon i'm hunting in my uncle mike's cornfield in swan lake mississippi there's an eight point and a ten point out here, so I'm hoping that if the wind dies down, I can try to get one. But Catfish, you told me last year you did almost a thousand hunts. Yeah. People are not going to continue to come back unless they're successful. These people have enjoyed themselves and they've been successful and they come back year after year after year. But the key to it all is having great places to hunt. First thing you've got to have is you've got to have the food supply, you've got to have the water, and you've got to scout, you've got to not, not overhunt areas, and then you've got to be honest with people too. If you see that you're not going to have ducks, you just say, okay, you know, slow down a little bit, we'll come later, call me. You know, I tell everybody I need 15 minutes notice and a flimsy excuse if you call and you want to, you know, come right on, all you got to do is just call, and I tell you, I say, you've got a cold front coming, the ducks are here, come on. And about half of my business, people come in and stay with me. I've got houses where they stay and put them up in different groups. The other half stay at camp, stay in town 30 miles away and drive in. And uh, I really encourage people to come here and stay and just see, ride around the county and see what's here. It's a really, really neat place. People can come and hunt just the morning hunt. They can come morning hunt with lodging the night before. They can come do an afternoon hunt this time of the year. They can do an all-day deer hunt with lodging. They can do an afternoon deer hunt. We have trophy fees which are very, very reasonable on the different deer that we kill. You pick the dream job for, for, for yourself, you know, especially since I love to hunt like I do and be out in the outdoors. It's just, you know, it doesn't get any better than this. Folks, Caitlin's range is about 150 yards where she feels comfortable. This deer is about 200 yards. We've got to get him 50 yards closer. flowing around 35 miles an hour. The deer are already nervous. Hey, we're right in the middle of the rut. 
He's got one thing on his mind and it's love. He's gone. When this deer walked off, Caitlin's heart sank and we thought the afternoon was over. But hey, little did we know. Do you see him? Yes, we do. Stay on that deer. This is one of the bucks that Caitlin's Uncle Mike has been seeing in the fields. We just had no idea with the weather conditions being what they are today, that Caitlin would have an opportunity at this awesome buck. Can you see it? Yeah. Can you see it? Yeah. Can you shoot him? Yeah. I think. If you can shoot him, squeeze one off real slow in the front shoulder. Wait a minute, he's moving. Wait. Squeeze one off if you can. Shoot him a little bit high if you can. Can you see him? Thank you. to the left, you need to shoot him. Can you see him? Yeah. Talk to me. I can see him. Do what? I can see him. You can? Yes. If he'll turn to the left, you need to shoot him. You can hear Scooter knocking the gain up on the camera. He's doing all he can to add extra light. We're running out of light. We're running out quick. Squeeze it off real easy. Shoot it. Yeah. Folks, Scooter's having to put the camera down. He's doing all he can to fix this gun. Caitlin can't get the safety off. The trigger won't pull. Caitlin is in a bind. Were you trying to squeeze the trigger? Mm -hmm. You're trying to squeeze it? I don't know, girl. It won't go either way. You got a bullet in the chamber? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's try it again. Folks, what happened here, Caitlin has been holding her gun all afternoon. It's the moisture around the gun. The wind's blowing 30 plus miles an hour. It is so cold. The gun's froze up. Okay, try it again. Squeeze it really hard if you can. Just squeeze it. Squeeze, squeeze. There you go. Okay, okay, okay. Keep your finger off the trigger till you're ready. Don't touch the trigger till you're ready. Okay, he's still, he's still broadside. Gotta, gotta hurt. He's still broadside. If you, can, if you can squeeze it, squeeze it really slow. Wait, 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 wait. You see it? The deer's walking off. Caitlin, clearly, even if the gun was working, has not got a good shot right now. Hey, this is why they call it hunting and not killing. Everybody here just hates that you didn't take this deer as your first deer and a true trophy, but hey, there's always tomorrow. My wife was alive for my first five years of my business, and this is my seventh year since she passed away. And I'd gotten to where I depended on it for a wintertime income. We were, you know, we, we started 
partly out of economic necessity. You know, we were cotton farmers, and cotton farming wasn't so good back 10, 12 years ago. And uh, we needed some wintertime income, so that's, I started this business, and it just started growing. And when she passed away, uh, I, I quit hunting. I had to give up something to keep my business like it was. And so I quit hunting. I hired uh, my daughter and my daughter-in-law to cook for me, my sister-in-law to do my camps, and my nephews and other boys to guide for me, and my business just took off. And then I started promoting it. I do a lot of shows. I do a lot of advertising. I go to outdoor shows all over the country, trying to get people to come to Tallahatchie County, and they do. You know, I didn't count the number of states in there this morning, but last Saturday I had people in my kitchen eating breakfast like they were today from 14 different states. I love the people. I love the, the different people that come in from all. I love the kids that come in, the, the older guys that come in. You know, we had a guy shoot his first pintail this morning. We had a guy that his son's a Navy SEAL in Afghanistan here. Uh, we had people come in from New York, Philadelphia, everywhere this morning, you know, and they've never seen ducks like that. You know, they don't have to kill a duck, you know, they just see it. That guy that shot his first pintail is me, and I was very, <laughs> very proud of it. The only problem with that pintail is it's going to cost me money because I am going to have it mounted. But, you know, I didn't, I didn't grow up duck hunting, but that was a true honor, and it was just a pleasure for me to be able to go out there and take that animal. And it's a trophy. Yeah. A lot of people don't look at ducks as a trophy, but I guarantee you, a pintail, and they call it a stem, the tail, it's a true trophy for me. I get a kick out of that. It really, really gets me going. Just like when the girl, the boy killed a deer yesterday, and the little girl run wouldn't get off safety yesterday, and she couldn't kill the big buck. Uh, you know, I know she was sad, but that's, that's part of it. For over 70 years, Mississippi Outdoors Magazine has served the readers of the Magnolia State. In it contains several interesting features, such as wildlife photography, the lunar table, and even a kid's page. Subscriptions to the magazine are very inexpensive, and when you subscribe, you will receive six bi-monthly issues containing articles on hunting and fishing in the state, public lakes, state parks, and even our wildlife management areas. For more information, call our toll-free number at 1-888-874-5785. Just tighten up the bowl, get a little more poundage on it for the salt water. These have a little bit tougher skin down here. Need that little bit of extra poundage. Just making sure everything is tight. Not gonna get removed from a fish. Make sure all the, the rest, everything's ready to go. You ain't got enough air. Uh, can't never have too many arrows. You ready? Ready to go. Mississippi Outdoors is on the Gulf Coast today. We're down here in the East Marshes of Pascagoula. Um, we're going to be doing some shallow water fishing for redfish, black drum. We're at Freifogel Charters, but we're going to be doing a little something different today. We don't have fishing poles. We've got bows and arrows. Um, normally, bow fishing is done at nighttime in the northern part of the state. They do a lot of carp and buffalo and things, but down here, these guys are going to put us on some redfish. Black drum. Um, Multiple species, y'all got a few gar you said as well. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna try something a little different today. We're gonna we're gonna put some put some wood to them. We're gonna stick something. Yeah, he's right there. Nailed him.
Yeah, but you just sort of come out. So Trey, tell me a little bit about your business. How long have you been in, in business doing this type of fishing? Um, I've been guiding here out of Pascagoula for, this will be my second year. Um, last year I went full time, this year I'm just guiding on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, so just the weekend. But uh, I run out of here, out of Pascagoula, and then I run out of Delacroix, Louisiana. Now Chuck, you, you fish the Redfish Tour as well? Yep, me and my partner Chuck, we fish the IFA Redfish Tour, and uh, we fish the Louisiana and the Florida Division. Bow fishing is basically the same technique of a bow and arrow, but here we're using a different style tip. We're using a fish tip on here where it'll actually hold into the fish. We've got a string attached here with a little reel. This little reel's got an automatic setting on it. It shoots out, free line, but then it's got a trigger for you to reel him back in. Pretty neat. Look at here, look at here. Made him skip, didn't it? The neat thing with these little bows here, these bows are designed as well, they have a zero let off on it. So a, anybody can shoot it, you don't have to have a certain pullback. I mean, if you pull it to here, it'll shoot. If you pull it to here, it's gonna shoot. Oh, there he is, going in the bank. Bam! Got Good him. shot. <laughs> I barely missed him, I know that. Dude, that was money. Flip him up in here. Man, my boy's head shooting these things, son. I, I did the flushing technique, old southern marsh trick. He was going up in the grass, so I pushed him back out. My man put the head shot on him. Right there. Oh, there he goes. Big black drum. Another one right there. See the V? See, see the big V right there? He's right there, see him? See his tail? Got him. I can spin you around, let me, let me follow him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's trying to get that out. <laughs> Those fish down there? Stingray right there. Where? Big stingray right here. Oh. Did he? Yep. Yeah, you got him. I shot him in there. It pulled, oh, it pulled out. out. Yep, I need to switch to a graper point, apparently. Right there, see? Yeah. There's the owner. Got him. Yeah. Where's that other one? Uh, he was behind us. Yeah, that's a big one. I'll put it back a bit right now. That should have been in. Yeah, that's the two. Okay, I'm trying to stand. You can hold it until I get to hit it. Got it, too. Hey. He's pointing in that. Look at that thing. There he is, right over there. We had a wonderful day. We didn't catch quite as many, but the sun done got hot. My boy's ready to go. My belly's getting hungry. And it's time to go to the house. That close. Did you know that the money spent on your hunting and fishing license is an investment? The Mississippi Department of Wildlife, Fisheries, and Parks uses money from license sales to enhance hunting and fishing. Like providing public hunting opportunities for wildlife management areas. Advise private landowners on deer and habitat management. Providing public fishing opportunities on state lakes. And operating fish hatcheries for stocking public lakes and streams. So make an investment in the great outdoors. Buy your Mississippi hunting and fishing license today.